What is up ladies and gentlemen, many here, welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to quickly answer a actually very interesting question that I get a lot and that is the one, many, should I push my max grade rather or should I try to broaden the base of my grade pyramid before I try a new max grade, right? What is the better strategy? What is the better long-term strategy in terms of progress and injury prevention and that kind of stuff, right? So some of you might actually have the question what kind of pyramids are you really talking about well the pyramid is is one way to um to kind of depict your achievements in in climbing essentially in the climbing sport and the shape of this pyramid is kind of um, depicting it's symbolizing whether you as a climber are starting out where you, whether you reached a plateau or whether you've progressed quickly right quick progress is a very pointy pyramid obviously um, plateauing is a very is a very broad and flattened out pyramid and one way to actually depict it relatively practically in the internet is uh, to have simply an 88.new account where you log all your ascents essentially and this um, website then gives you autom automatically a pyramid that you can look at and compare you know you can analyze various years and of your climbing and all that kind of stuff so that's what the pyramid is about the question is essentially should you always keep trying to push the max grade or are there certain periods where it's um, strategically better to um, broaden your pyramid first and then go for a max grade, right? And the funny thing is that just recently during this Leonidio trip, the question came up again uh, when I met a young and still not so experienced rock climber who just sent his first 7C, 7C plus, and already projected his first 8A while I was there, right? And he was asking me, what do you think? Should I try to, you know, keep progressing, keep up this quick progress, or should I just um, step back a bit and maybe, you know, broaden the pyramid it first and here's what I told him I essentially I said no just go for it just try to push your max grade if you have this kind of progress now if you have this kind of winning streak so to say just try to keep it up keep up this winning streak as much as possible and the reason for that is twofold first of all I have the feeling that if you just try to increase your max grade, and especially if, you, if you're doing well with that, right? Never change a running system, never change a winning system. If you're doing well with that kind of strategy, then just keep it up as much as possible because it will allow you to, to point through as high as possible in the grade ladder and then the climbing system, the grading system will put you into place naturally anyway, right? You're gonna hit that wall, that kind of uh, metal plate where this spear tip <laughs> of the quick progress doesn't get through anymore. And then you're gonna get stalled and you're gonna have to flatten out your pyramid first anyway before you can progress into even higher max grades. So this is the first reason. The second reason is you can always broaden your pyramid later anyway right broadening your pyramid doesn't run away from you however progressing into max uh, grades doesn't does run away from you at least a little bit in the long term because uh, we're only that young right uh, progressing in terms of hard grade is a lot easier when you're young um, holding a max grade can be achieved even in a high age in my experience at least but progressing in terms of max, max grades is definitely a lot easier than uh, when you're young and if you see all these um, the old guys right the old dogs who who still climbed 9a at 50 years old or something like that if you look at their climbing history you find out that they actually already climbed 8a when they were 20 right or 25 it is really rare that someone starts climbing at 45 and climbs 9a at 50 or 55 this doesn't really happen okay you have to have this broke this pro this kind of progress already and then you just can keep it into old age that's amazing of course if you can do it but um, these people always have kind of a, of a steep progression curve in their young years. And this is what I, what I would recommend any one of you. If you can and if you can keep up your winning streak in terms of gaining max grade, keep it up. 
um, go as quickly as possible, lose that grade respect, right? Any new grade that you achieve is something in your pocket that you can go back to and think, okay, I know how this grade feels, I already did it, right? And even if it's just one route, you can still say you already did it um, and this is going to help you lose grade respect when you progress into even higher grades. Something that I can demonstrate very, very well uh, when I look at my own history, when it comes to uh, grades and when I reached grades, uh, this is why I checked my 8a.nu account recently, by the way, uh, because I wanted to make this video. So I've talked about when I started climbing uh, quite a couple of times already because I get the question quite a lot, obviously. Um, I started when I was around 17 or something in a, in a rock climbing gym, in a bouldering gym, very old school gym, walls full of holes, you only had to build your own problems, right? Uh, this kind of stuff. And I climbed in this gym two to three years training, not even knowing why I essentially did it. I just liked it, right? I just did the climbing, built my own problems, did all the stuff. Never really went outdoors. I didn't even know that you could train for the outdoors in an indoor setting like that. I just went there because I had fun. And then some people took me on the outdoors for the first time. That was in 2011. In 2011, I made my first rock contact with, um, you know, with all that strength that I had from the, from the gym indoors. And during that year... Uh, I climbed my first 7A+, plus, that's 511D in Yankee Doodle. And the reason why I say uh, only the year is because I didn't even have a training diary back then. I didn't even note my ascents, so I don't know the exact dates. But I know I climbed my first 7A+, plus during 2011. And in 2012, it was around the 1st of February 2012, I climbed my first 7B. That's 512A, it's a route called Nido in Osp, pretty nice route, but, uh, by the way, in Osp, Slovenia. At this point, I had done three 7A pluses, all right? That's what I know. Um, the, the, again, it's someone happened in 2011, and now um, the, the progression really takes off. Something happens in that year, in 2012, where I got really psyched for outdoor climbing, and this is, I think, a regular outdoor contact. In 2011, I was only very sporadically at rock, and I was still mainly focused on indoor bouldering. You know, I didn't really feel the psych. The limestone didn't really, I didn't really like it. Maybe I went to the wrong crags. I don't know, but I didn't really got psyched for it. And in 2012, I really got psyched for outdoor climbing when I, and that's when I did my first 7B. And from there on, I just did this strategy. I just went for max grades. I just went for max grades, waiting for the climbing, the nature of climbing to put me into place, right? So here's what happens. Uh, on this, in the 6th of April 2012, so that's around like uh, two months later from my 7B, my first 7B, I climbed my first 7C, actually skipping one grade. At this point, I didn't even climb my, uh, a 7B+. plus. So I climbed my first 7C, that's 512C, the 6th of April, a route called Helmut in Baden, actually, small little crag south of Vienna, funny stuff. At this point, I had done zero 7B pluses and three 7Bs. So really pointy pyramid, right? Pointy as hell pyramid. Then I did my first 7C plus, that's 512D in Yankee Doodle, in the 20th of May. So that's roughly, yeah, one and a half months later from my first 7C. It was a route called Bogata Maria in Paklenica. And the funny thing is that in the guidebook, this route was actually 8A. But I had the feeling it wasn't really much harder than the first 7C that I did before. So I thought, okay, maybe it's a soft one. I just give it 7C plus, what, whatever. Now I rechecked the route and I found out that actually still most people have it in as 8A. So maybe it's just also a soft 8A, right? Maybe that was actually my first 8A back then. But regardless, let's take it as a 7C plus on the 20th of May. At this point, I had done three 7Cs and uh, yeah, that's it. The first real 8A 
came in at the 22nd of June in 2012. And this was the Hängenden Gärten in Se of Semiramis, the Hängenden Gärten de Semiramis, really nice classic 8A route in the Atlitzgräben. And if it's your first 8A, it's kind of tough for the grade. The reason for that is it's a power endurance route. And with power endurance routes, it's really hard to send them as a, as a grade first, right? Because they get disproportionately easier if you're above the grade. There's something to do with pump and resistance to the pump and stuff like that with, with finger strength, obviously, of course, as well. But that's just how it is. So the first real 8A, that's 513A in Yankee Doodle, came in at 22nd of June in 2012. So essentially, in half a year, in less even than half a year, right? I progressed from 7B to 8A, super pointy pyramid. <clears throat> when I did my first 8A, I had done only one 7C plus, the, the one that I that actually is also graded 8A in the guidebook, that, but which I took as 7C plus. So I had a super pointy pyramid and then something interesting happens, boom, I get put into place by the nature of climbing. I just didn't have the strength to go even beyond that, right? If it goes so steeply up like that, you would expect this to um, to reoccur, right? You just keep going and then you maybe send even one 8A plus and maybe two 8A pluses for 2012 and one more 8B or something where you stall out. But no, you stall out super, like, you like it's like if you hit a wall, right? And this is what happened then. I hit a wall. Usually this also occurs, <laughs> you know, people... If they progress really fast, there is also quite a high chance for injury, right? Because you're doing harder moves and your 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 tendons and all your stuff, your joints, they are not used to this kind of um, to these kind of new forces, and you're increasing the forces really, really rapidly, right? Not so much for me personally, because I actually climbed already pretty hard in that bouldering gym, and for me it was about getting that strength that I had from training in that old school bouldering gym on rock right being able to apply it on rock and this is what i learned during that year and i think when i hit my first 8a i finally leveled these two things out right this is what i had to this is what i could climb with applying that strength that i had from indoors on the outdoors and that's when the climbing system put me into place and there i had to stay for a quite a while actually then comes a big stop and only one year later in the 7th of july 17th of july in 2013 i climbed my first 8a plus 513c Yankee Doodle, a route called Cold Turkey in Hochkogel. Really nice crag as well. And at this point, I had done already 10 8 A's, right? 10 513 A's. So here we have, I, I, I peeked through with the spear tip and then I hit a wall and then I had to broaden the pyramid automatically until I could break through again to 8 A+. So that's what I recommend. If you want to have fast progress, just keep progressing as fast as possible with your max grade and you will put into place, you will be put into place anyway. And here is the thing. A lot of people will ask now, okay, but how can I prevent running into my max grade pro, pro project and losing a lot of energy there when I instead could spend this energy right away into broadening my pyramid to then, uh, you know, tip, peek through it later. Right? So how can you not lose a lot of energy in your main project? And the, the main mechanism that you have to apply is here, have side projects. Right? This is always something that I would recommend. If you're going for increasing your max grade, do not waste all your energy into that one max grade proje project. Have side projects that are easier than that. Right? Have side projects which are one, two grades easier so that you have something to do when the conditions are bad, so that you have something to do when you have a bad day, right? Then you do one try in your main project, maybe you warm up right away in it and you feel, ah, today it's not gonna work. Today I have bad friction, today I have not so much strength. And then you have a side project right at your hand, which you can do instead of that. And this way you will automatically broaden your pyramid, even though you're, you're all the time still trying to increase that max grade, right? You're always giving it a try. And then at some point you're gonna break through naturally. So this is how you prevent uh, wasting a lot of time in just one single max project when you're just not still yet ready for it. 
you have side projects where you can put that energy towards to and broaden your pyramid automatically that way. All right, so first 8A plus comes in at 17th of July, 2013. First 8B, that's 513D, Yankee Doodle, comes in at the 31st of, Sep of December, 2013. So here I got a bit of uh, quicker progression again. I could, uh, I could um, you know, sharpen my uh, pyramid tip a little bit again. This was a route uh, called Kurfil in Siorana, actually. At this point, I had done five 8A pluses when I did my first 8B. And by the way, I had done 21 eight, eight A's already. So here you can see really how the pyramid uh, flattens out and the, only the tip of the pyramid tries desperately to progress even further, but the, pur but the base of it already really flattens out. And then the first 8B+, plus, that's 514A, comes in at the 5th of April 2014. That's a route called God King Lisa Simpson in Adlitzkrim, actually. Really cool route as well. Um, and at this point, I had done two 8Bs only and uh, eight 8 8 pluses and 23 8 As. So beyond, below 8B, it really flattened out at this point. But 8B, I had very few and 8B plus, I had only one. So really, uh, you know, pointy tip of the pyramid again. And here I get put into place again by the nature of climbing and I get a big stop reaching a big plateau again. Uh, of two years actually until my first 8C, my first 514B Yankee Doodle arrives at the 30th of April 2016, all right? So again, I had two years to wait from my first 8B plus to my first 8C. I got put into place by the nature of climbing very, very naturally. I had tried this first 8C of mine already, I think one year before I actually sent it, right? So one year before I actually sent it, I already gave it some goes. I checked out the route, but I did not waste all my energy into that route, right? I had my side projects, did my side project 8B pluses. At this point, when my first 8C arrived, I had done already three 8B pluses and 12 8Bs actually. So I had my side projects to broaden the pyramid below 8C naturally. And then it's, it just happened at some point with the first 8C. And then I get another big, big, huge stop again, huge plateau of three and a half years until my first 8C plus arrives, my first 514C Yankee Doodle. That's on the 8th of November 2019. So not too long ago, actually, half a year ago, roughly, a route called Mode Selector in Pegau in the Grazer Bergland. And at this point, I had done a seven 8Cs, okay? So what was previously so hard for me, the 8C, which I had to spend so much effort for, I think I spent 70 um, goals in my first 8C before it finally happened. Uh, what what took so much effort, I had seven at this point of, right? Seven 8Cs and 13 8B pluses and 32 8Bs already when I arrived at my first 8C plus. So this is how the pyramid really flattens out naturally if you keep going into side projects and at some point you're going to break through then into new max grades pretty naturally. If you have side projects, right? That's why I always recommend side projects. But apart from that, just try to progress as much as possible in terms of max grade because it gives you the most experience. It takes away most of the great respect. And this is what keeps people back, actually. This is what holds people back a lot. And uh, let yourself be put into place by your genetics, by your starting age and by the nature of climbing, right? And then you can always broaden your pyramid later to break through into new grades if that is necessary. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this little discussion about great pyramids. If you did, uh, drop a like down below, that's very appreciated. And of course, drop your own experience down below. I would be, would be very curious to read it. And of course, other people probably as well. So thanks for that. And I'll see you soon in the next one, guys. Bye, have a great one.